In this exercise, we will demonstrate how to create custom progress bars for your file upload forms. You can very easily tie your custom progress bar to your existing progress events in your JavaScript. So if you allow users to upload images, music files, video files, or any kind of file uploads, you may want to consider adding a progress bar to that mechanism just to let the user know how much of their file has been uploaded to the server as it is uploading. Now let's take a look at the stock HTML5 progress bar and how it varies in appearance between all the different browsing environments. Here we are in Chrome, this is Internet Explorer, and this is Firefox. Look at that stock HTML5 progress bar. It looks totally different in all of those different browsers. Now this might be a problem if you want a consistent look across all environments in your applications. And we have the added benefit of being able to put dynamic text showing the amount of the percentage of upload. And that's something that you can't as easily put in the center of the progress bar unless you stack some elements within a container. And another important aspect is it's backwards compatible. So your custom progress bar will work in more environments than the HTML5 new progress bar. Your custom progress bar will be coded in such a way that it will be backwards compatible with older browser software. So it'll work in all environments, new and old. And it'll look exactly the same in all environments. Now you'll have this issue with HTML5 slider components, you know, regular old buttons the button element will look different in all the different browsers. It'll look slightly different. So you have to customize your components if you want a consistent look across all the browsing environments. All right, let's begin with a blank HTML file. And first, let's just put a div in place. Now this div, we're gonna give an ID equal to progress bar container. So we'll just call it PBC for short. Now let's go down a couple of lines, and inside of that we're going to nest another child div. This one will give id equal to pb, short for progress bar. This is going to be the actual progress bar that grows dynamically when our JavaScript tells it to. Now let's put one more div in place. This is another child div nested inside of the progress bar container. And this one let's call pbt, short for progress bar text. And this one you only have to have in place if you wanted that nifty text centered in the bar like I had. It's not even a necessary component. You'll notice that the stock HTML5 progress bar doesn't show it. So this is just optional. I thought it would be a cool addition. So you have your progress bar container div, and then there's two child divs inside of it. One is the progress bar, and the other is the progress bar text. Now above that, I'm just going to add some style now to affect all of these elements by their ID. So here's my style tag, and now I have PBC, and inside of PBC you can go in and target the child PB element, and then in PBC you can go in and target the child PB text element. Or you can just put it like this if you want, but I just think it might make more sense if you keep a reference to the nesting in your CSS. And don't worry, if you can't see all of these properties on the screen, I'm going to have it all available under the video where it plays at develop PHP. Now if I was to right now just put some dummy text in the PBT element, the progress bar text element, and let's say for the progress bar I put this at 25 percent. We render that. Now you can see that you have dummy text and your progress bar has some length to it, 25 percent. And it really doesn't matter, you can put this on 100 pixels, the progress bar container, and then test, and you'll see that you have a smaller bar now, but it's still only 25%, because we set it up using percentages, which is an easier way to make things dynamic. So this progress bar can be any height and width that you like, and all the code will still work appropriately without you having to adjust numbers. So you just leave this on 0%, for the bar width, you get rid of your dummy text, and then you affect those things with JavaScript. So what you're going to do, now that you have your progress bar and all the styling for it, is you're going to affect the progress bar and the progress bar text with your JavaScript in your progress events. So if you're someone who's never 
dealt with JavaScript progress events before, then you, you probably don't have a need to make custom progress bars. But if you have, then this is the code that you use to affect the width of the progress bar and the inner HTML of the progress bar text. So all I did was put a test value in place at 50%. So it'll be 50% that this bar width will be set to and it, the inner HTML for the progress bar text will say 50%. Let's see what it looks like. So you see? Here, let me change the width of the container to something like 300. There we go, now we see it a little better. So really that's all the information you need. Now all you do is put this code here where you would have your progress events in your existing JavaScript. Hey, if you go to developphp.com, up in the search bar, just type in the word progress, and then you'll see results for the code library, but you want to go to video tutorials, and then press go. And you'll see file upload progress bar meter tutorial. Now this is the tutorial that you can watch and take the code of. See all the code down here? And right here in your progress handler, is where you put the code that we just wrote to make that bar grow and that text that dynamic text to say whatever you want so right here where I have these two blue lines highlighted in the progress handler function that's where you put these two lines instead if you want to use your own custom progress bar alright so I'll put all of this code under the video where it plays at developphp.com if you just want to snatch the code real quick and replace your stock HTML5 progress bars for a nice easy to build custom progress bar component and remember for your sliders color pickers buttons or any components that the browser might render they're gonna look different in all the different browser software and it's hard for you to get consistency across all the different environments if you rely upon the stock components